1946 it was the first commercial release that I could find in our catalog collection of the wire recorder, the Utah 60, for $350. 1947, Brush released the sound mirror behind me, the BK-401. It was the first tape recorder that I could find commercially released in the U.S. During that year, Magnacord also came out with a wire recorder, but in 1947 quickly switched to tape. In 1948, with the efforts by John Mullen and the backing by Bing Crosby, Ampex had released their 200A. ABC bought 12 at $5,200 each. The Berlant Concertone 1401 was marketed. In March of 1948, Magnacord had a prototype of the Magnacord PT-6. It was presented at the National Association of Broadcasters in Los Angeles, and it is said within three days they had $45,000 worth of business. Webster's wire recorders also started showing up in catalogs in the United States. And by 1948, a number of companies had begun releasing wire recorders and tape recorders. In looking at the U.S. catalogs, by 1950, the wire recorder was gone and tape recorders began to proliferate the markets. By 1953, there were some 38 companies making 75 models of reel-to-reel -reel tape recorders. None of that list included Sony or TIAC, who were to come later. In 1972, the audio tape guide shows that there were 20 companies with 69 tape recorder models available. And in the mid-80s, the companies that were still manufacturing tape recorders included Ampex, Fostex, Atari, Sony, TIAC Tascam, Revox, Studer, and Ewer. While more probably existed by 1992, we could only find Fostex advertising their G24S, Atari, and Tascam advertising their last recorder, which was the BR20 series. At this point, I really want to refer you back to our website, and through the collection of catalogs and ads online, you can look at the various manufacturers over the years and what models they were producing. We will continue to grow that collection as we receive new information. Catalogs available to us that we use to document a lot of the things we talk about in this DVD included Ally, Lafayette, McGee, Olson, Concord, Bernstein, Appleby, and later Warehouse Sound. And magazines including professional recording magazines, the AES Journal, Recording Engineer, DB, among others. The Tape Recorder, Audio Magazine, High Fidelity, Tape, and others that came and went. Modern Recording and Music, which became Mix, also has a wealth of information about the history of recording. The most early tape recorders, the real size was seven inches, or as you got into the more professional, they'd be ten and a half inches. Later on, there was also five inch and three inch. Here's a very quick look at the various ways that manufacturers created the different controls to move the tape across the head path. I'm going to move now to some very specific things about the tape recorder, some basic functioning. And I'm not going to go into great detail, but just for folks that are not familiar with the workings of a tape recorder, I want to show you what's involved. On the left, the supply reel has a turntable that holds the full reel of tape. The supply reel also applies tension. There are normally two or three heads on a tape recorder. Sometimes the record and play heads are. There are also guides along the way. Even though the manufacturers approached the process in a very different way as far as providing controls for the mechanism on a tape recorder, they all essentially had to perform the same function, and that is play. On our website, we have several stories about the manufacturer the speakers if they were self-contained. Most decks, of course, would only have the preamps. Or cost recorders had a single motor and then used pulleys and belts to provide all the play, rewind, and fast-forward functions in a unit with multiple motors. Here's a quick look at some of the various tape configurations. Originally, there was full track. Parts. So you could record on track one. Re tape recorder decks refer to those that do not have speaker. Eye, to a magic eye that then provided stereo information. And then to meters.
these heads are disengaged. Tape lifters to keep the tape away from the heads. Many of the decks we have in our collection arrived in fairly good shape. It still amazes me how different manufacturers built tape recorders during this period. Even Philco Ford released a recorder.